family and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Brittany and I'm so excited that you've joined us today. We know that there is so much in the Word to do with faith and there can be so many different types of faith. Well, this week we've been studying the fundamentals of faith and building our foundation in the Word. Dad is taking us through those different types of faith and showing us exactly how to apply it to our lives. He's even showing us what the difference between faith and hope is. So let's enjoy this together. We understand from Hebrews 11 verse 6, without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now, as I did pray in my opening prayer, we recognize that God is the one who created us. We didn't come up with the idea that He should bless us. He told us He wants to bless us. He is the one that reached out to Abraham and said, I am El Shaddai, and I am the one that's going to bless you, and you will be a blessing. I'm going to make you great. I'm going to make your family great. And you're going to fill the earth and you'll be a blessing to nations. That was God's desire. Family, get a hold of that. that. The fact that God has created everything in this planet for us to live in as a man. He created mankind to enjoy his creation. And he only moves in the earth through a man. Every time God has ever moved, every time God has ever spoken, it's been through a man. Even when you see great miracles, amazing signs and wonders that you know could never have happened unless it was God. He still did it when that man raised his staff or that man spoke a word or that man said something or that man did something. Then God moved. And so if we want to see God move in our lives, He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And he works through the foundation of faith. And without faith, it's impossible to please God. We know that everything else, you know, if you talk about living a righteous life, we understand that worshiping God pleases him. We understand that bringing the tithe gives him honor and reminds us of who our God is. That pleases God. When we pray for others, it pleases God. When we lead people to Jesus, it pleases God. But none of it would please God if it wasn't by faith. Then it's just dead works. And he says, without faith it is impossible to please God. And as we have been taking time in this study, if it's so important, and the Word tells us the just shall live by faith, if we're going to live this way, knowing that this faith is so important to God, then I want to know His definition of faith. So we've been looking at the fundamentals of faith, getting back to the basics so if we're going to have a look at what faith is, then we need to study out his definition of faith. And he gives us the definition in verse 1. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. And so I've approached the subject from the perspective of if you want to know what faith is, it also helps to understand what it's not. And here we see faith is the substance of things hoped for. Very often people can confuse faith and hope. Do you believe God? Yes. Well, then He's healed you. I hope so. You see, now we're back into hope. I just asked if you believe. And that's where we sometimes make our mistake is we think, you know, I'm hoping and praying. You know, like that is an effort on our part. But hope talks about the future, the substance of things hoped for. Hope is something that's created out of the future. Now, we wouldn't know what to hope for if it wasn't for God. So we don't discount hope. God gives us a hope. He says, I have healed you. So you have a hope of experiencing that manifestation. I have provided your every need. Now, my bank account may be empty at the moment, but now it's created a hope in me. That hope, the Bible talks about it being the anchor of our soul. So our mind doesn't have to drip everywhere else. God centers us on His promise. Now that I have a hope, faith is what gives that hope substance. So we first of all identify, and we have to make sure in our minds that we understand that faith is not hope. Say that faith is not hope. Faith is the substance of what I'm hoping for. So hope is what gives us 
the understanding, it's the future, it's the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So we're working in the realm of not yet seeing the manifestation. So it's that manifestation that we are pursuing. But Romans chapter 4, verse 16, therefore it is of faith. What we're we talking about? Well, verse 13 talks about the promise according to Galatians 3.29, because we are heirs of Abraham, we're heirs of his seed, we also are heirs according to the promise. Now he says here, the promise is that he, Abraham, would be the heir of the world, was not just to Abraham or to his seed, it's to each of us, by the law, but it was through the righteousness of faith. And so we understand that when God spoke that Abraham would inherit the world, he was declaring to anyone that would be of Christ. And if you have Christ, you are Abraham's seed, so you inherit the same promise. Say that, I have inherited the world. That's what God has promised us. And so Abraham now has this promise, the promise of being the heir, a promise of producing nations. And he says in Romans chapter 4, once again, verse 16, it is of faith that it might be according to grace, so that the promise will be sure to all the seed. So God makes sure that it gets to you because of this law of faith. And he says, not only to those who are of the law, but also to those who are of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Now we saw that in Genesis chapter 17, where God spoke to Abraham before he had produced a child. He was already 100 years old. His wife, Sarah, who womb was already dead, and so it seemed impossible for the both of them, and yet God said, I have made you. He didn't say, I'm going to make you. He said, it will happen because I have already made you the father of many nations. In other words, he was already, in God's mind, the father of many nations. And having spoken it, in the presence of him whom he believed. Now, if you do a word study there, you'll find out the way that's written in the original Greek, in the presence of him whom he believed. And if you keep reading now that God calls things that are not as though they are, what it's saying is God operates this way, and because Abraham was in his presence, he did the same. Remember, the spirit of faith is having believed, I speak. So if God says it, I believe it, I'm going to say what he said. So you've got to get a hold of that. This is, what he is, this is the understanding that this piece of Scripture is bringing across. So now, in the presence of him whom he believed, God, who calls things that are not as if though they were, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Calls things that do not exist as though they did. God calls things that do not exist as though they did. He doesn't call things that do exist as if though they don't. Now this I explained last week, but I want to just take a moment here because this really is one of those swing points again where the people get faith or not. Because I find that in my life, there were times when I thought I knew about faith until one of these aha moments came. And when the aha moment came, I realized, okay, that wasn't faith, and I need to change now. And when I changed it, I saw the result. How I mean, you know what I'm talking about? And so this is very often when you, when you hear people and you, they, again, if we think we're in faith, we've got to come back to what does the Word say. So just by saying, I'm not sick, is not faith. Denying the sickness is not faith. By Jesus' stripes you have been healed. I've been healed. And so then the enemy or people can try and point out, yeah, but what's that symptom in your body? Now that is a fact. It's a fact the sun is still shining. If you look out the door now, you'll see it's there. But that fact will change in a few hours. Facts can change. Truth is always the same. If you take one plus one, it is two. You go to the moon, it'll still work there. Isn't that right? Now, you got somebody that uses little tricks and things to try and prove that one equals two. You know you're using A, B, and if you divide by C and add, but you realize somewhere along the line they took a turn because it was hidden in numbers. They violated a law. They come up, therefore, one equals two. 
Have you ever played one of those games before? You put it down to apples, one apple, one apple, it is two. It always has been, always will be. That is the truth. So even though the fact is that later it will be dark, the truth is the sun's still shining. You may not see it, but it's still there. So the facts are that right now there may be a symptom in my body, but the truth is I've been healed. So now the truth will apply its law and change the facts. You're getting a hold of this. So just saying I'm not sick, no, now you're denying facts. If the bank account's empty, it's empty. Hello. Just say, I don't have debt. Hallelujah. I don't have debt. Hallelujah. The debt's not going to disappear because you say, I don't have debt. No. I, you can live a life without debt and still struggle. No, I want to be financially free. I want a continuous flow of God's provision and His supply. Now, He's given provision for that in His Word. God makes grace abound toward you that you always have all sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 6. My God shall supply, how much? All your need. How? According to His riches, not according to my bank account. Not according to my boss's ability to pay me. According to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, Philippians 4.19. So God has given you provision in His Word. So you call what He says, even if you don't see it. So God, even though it hadn't happened yet, He calls it as though it is. Now, if the enemy tries to tell you, well, that's lying, just point them back to God. Are you going to call God a liar? The Bible says God's not a man that He should lie. In fact, the Word says he cannot lie. It says he cannot lie. He doesn't say he tries not to or he prefers not to. He'd rather be truthful. No, it says he cannot. Do you understand how powerful can't is? Can't shuts things down. That's why people need to watch how they use the word can't. When they tell a child, you can't go outside. No, they can you just don't want them to go out now. <laughs> Can't is a negating shutdown impossible. Do you understand what I'm saying? See, some people still look at me like, what's wrong with that? No, can't means it can't. So if you say you can't go outside, it means even if he walks to the front door, he'll bang into, even if the door's open, he, 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 he tries to get, that means can't go out. You understand? If he steps out the door, he can go out. But you don't want him to. So rather say, I don't want you to go outside. You see? See, I'm working with us here because what we, your believer is listening to how you speak. And it will respond accordingly. Okay? So now, we are saying, God calls things that are? Not as if though they are. He doesn't deny what's there. It's important you get that. Because if you don't get that swing point, then that's where you're going to struggle with faith. So it's not saying, I don't have debt. Or I'm not sick. Rather declare the truth of God's word. By his stripes I've been healed. My God shall supply all my need. So God speaks that way. Now, if someone comes and says, you're lying, as I said, you just point them back to God because that's what I was saying. God cannot, can't lie. You're getting this. It, it, it just, he cannot. If he says, today is Tuesday, are you going to tell him he's a liar? No, the whole calendar just changed. We have to go reprint our calendars because the one who said it changed all seasons. Everything just... Are you with me? The moment he says something, it is. When he says, light be, what happens? Light was. If he says, look, there's a horse over there. By the time your eyes get there, it'll be there. Even if there wasn't one, he says, there's a horse here. You know, what? Oh, boom, there it is. Because he has exactly what he says. 
So he, you see, he cannot lie. You're seeing this. That's why when God says something, you can take it and believe it. Because if he said it, it's settled. He'll never come back and say, now that thing I said two days ago, it was actually a mistake. No, it wasn't. Because when he said it, it is. So that's where we get some of the way we study the word, what you call the law of first mention. Once God says something, it's established for eternity. So you don't have to say, well, no, that was for back then. No, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he healed 2,000 years ago, he still does it today. Yes. All right. So now, if God's doing that, Paul said that we must be imitators of God. Imitators. In other words, be like God. Say what God says. Do the way God says. And he calls things that are not as if though they are, now listen to this, who contrary to hope, in hope believed, so that he became the father of many nations, according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. And not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and the deadness of Sarah's womb. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God and being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was also able to perform. Therefore, it was accounted to him for righteousness. Notice his faith was not based on his physical senses. Even though he was an old man, even though his wife's womb was dead, it was not based on what he felt. God had given him a promise. His word is yes and amen. Look at verse 21. Being fully convinced that what he had promised, he was able to perform. That's sometimes where people struggle with faith. They haven't yet convinced themselves of what God has said. Still working on a hope. We hear what the pastor says and we wish that's true. I hear you, pastor. I hope that works for me. Like somebody came to me once and said, Pastor Allen, I've tried this, you know, I've been trying, but it doesn't seem to be working. That's the problem. You've been trying. You find someone in faith, you can't talk them out of it. If, if someone still says, well, you know, do you believe this faith thing? Well, I, I, I think so. No, then you're not there yet. If I can give you an article, a YouTube video, a CD, a book, or whatever, then try and talk you out of faith, and somebody is able to do that, then that person was never in faith. Once somebody's in faith, you cannot talk them out of it. I don't care what happens. People look at my life and life of, of other men of God, and they think they never have any problems. You know, yes, of course, you would. I, I'd believe about your life as well, I'd believe. I mean, there's, you know, God's moving. No, you realize that, God, that the devil is still coming to steal the word. He still tax. He still does things. And there have been many, 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 many. If I stood here and started with it, I wouldn't be able to teach you anything else. I'll be doing testimonies till what time tonight. Of how many times the enemy has attacked, and in your head you want to say, is this really true? But you can't talk me out of it. I don't care what's happening in my body. I don't care what's happening in my account, bank accounts. I don't care what's happening in my family, my relationships, the ministry. No matter what's going, a raging fire could be burning down everything around me. And I'll still lift my hands and say, God, you never leave me nor forsake me. You know, I, I tell you, I, I'd have somebody with a gun against my head and say, do you believe everything you say happens? If you say yes now, I'm going to pull this trigger. I'm going to say pull the trigger because I'm not changing what I believe. This isn't even whether I believe in Jesus or not. I, if they said, do you believe in Jesus? That's an easy one. I'm not renouncing Jesus. Someone says, I'll never renounce Jesus even in the face of execution. Well, will you be willing to renounce faith in the face of execution? That's how much I believe it. 
come and says, I will beat you to a pulp if you would just renounce the whole concept of faith confession. Well, go ahead and beat me up because it works. This is the way God operates His kingdom. And I've chosen to believe that. And you, the problem is a lot of people, when they're struggling with faith, haven't got God's word on the issue. Do you believe your Bible? Or is this just a nice thing to believe and go to church because, hallelujah, I'm a Christian. And when a little persecution comes, well, no, I don't want to be that pedantic about it. No, this isn't a nice belief system. It's not just another philosophy. It's just a concept. Well, there's a bunch of Christians over there. They don't believe these things, and they don't have any problems and persecutions. Well, bless their heart. But what happens when problems come? Are you able to overcome them? Are you able to change, and are you able to adjust your lifestyle according to God's Word? Because I want to live His Word the way He gave it. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. How many you want to stand before God and please Him? If He, by His own Word, tells us that I cannot please Him without faith, it is possible to have faith that pleases Him. Faith, a spiritual substance so powerful, even a tiny seed-sized amount, when formed in you, can move mountains in your life. We're talking about the God kind of faith. We define that. How does the faith come? Knowing what the will of God is. We're going to see how do we now put that faith to work. God requires every believer to live by faith. So what exactly is faith? And how do we strengthen it? Until we get the fundamentals right, we will always be frustrated with the big picture. In this series, you will discover what real Bible faith is and how to live by faith. Family, we have to get comfortable with those Red Sea moments. Get your series today. Contact us at these details. Wow, wasn't that amazing? Aren't you just enjoying getting into the foundation of faith and studying out these fundamentals? If you'd like to continue studying this series, I want to encourage you to get your hands on a copy. You can contact us at the details below, place your order and we'll get yours to you so that you can build your foundation in the Word of God and continue studying out this powerful subject. Now my friend, I'd love to connect my faith with yours. I know there are things that we are all trusting for and God said in His Word, where two or more agree touching anything, it is done for them. So let's believe together. Dear Heavenly Father, you know exactly what our friends and partners are trusting for. I am connecting my faith with theirs because you said in your word, where two or more agree touching anything, it is done for them. I believe that we receive exactly what we are believing for because you are at work in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, my friend. Well, when this comes through for you, please let us know. We'd love to hear your testimonies. So you can send it to us on the details below or contact us on any of our social media platforms because we'd love to hear exactly what the Lord has done for you in your lives. Well, that's all we have time for today. Be sure to join us tomorrow as we continue to study the fundamentals of faith. This is Brittany reminding you that Jesus is Lord Life is a choice. Choose life. Visit Allen Bag Ministries online. At allenbagministries.org, you can find out more about Allen Bag, the call of God on his life, and more about who we are as a ministry. On our website, you will also be able to connect with us by making use of our contact details. You will also find out about the heartbeat of Allen Bag Ministries and how you can know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Hello my friend, my name is Alan Bagg and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. On our website, you will be able to watch our current television programs as well as catch up on any previously broadcast programs you may have missed. You will also be able to find the platforms we are broadcasting on as well as join us for our live streamed services at the Bay Christian Family Church over the weekends and special occasions. 
You can also make use of our easy to use giving facilities on our website and get involved in the many projects and ways available. Through the grace of God, Allen Bag Ministries help many to get through the challenges they face on a daily basis. And our heart is to help you in any way we can. So visit us at allenbagministries.org and let us help you identify and succeed in what the Lord has called you to do. If you missed any of our programs, you can either contact our offices and get hold of them or catch up on our YouTube channel. Don't miss out. Visit our Allen Bag Ministries YouTube channel and find that specific program you're looking for. Welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Allen Bag. Today we're going to carry on with you. You can now watch Wisdom for Life at your convenience. Hello, my friend, and welcome back to Wisdom for Life. My name is Alan Bag, and this week we have an exciting time ahead of us. You can now watch Wisdom for Life at your convenience, where and when you want, on our Alan Bag Ministries YouTube channel. Alan Bag reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. This is Alan Bag reminding you, Jesus is Lord. Remember, life is a choice. Choose life. God bless you. For any info, please contact us at allenbagministries.org. Alan Bag Ministries is making the series that featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs available to you for purchase. If you missed any of this week's programs or if this week's Wisdom for Life programs have helped you, we encourage you to purchase the series featured on this week's Wisdom for Life programs and have them available to strengthen your faith when needed. The series featured as this week's Wisdom for Life programs is available in digital format. So purchase yours online at allenbagministries.org or contact us to order your series at any of these details. 